The roller coaster ride of 2022 may continue into 2023. In fact, for some, it might be worse. As long as you pay attention to the key information I'm about to show you today, you're going to be much better off. You're going to be able to prepare for yourself, your portfolio, what your family is doing. Everything is contained in this video. The first thing I want to look at is the stock sell off that has taken place. I'll give you some insight there. The second thing is the status of 2023. Those who are informed are going to be much better prepared. To to make changes if necessary let's begin first i'll give you a little insight here from this article silicon valley staff rush to offload startup shares as valuations plummet workers forced into sales at a sharp discount amid job cuts and stalled ipo market see you could understand this from the insight of what's happening at an individual company. You could look at it on a broad level. I'm just showing you here in this one place because tech stocks have been hit very hard. This was one area, one sector that was doing so well over the last while and yet um, it had really taken a hit. So some people who got in late really got burned. This is a quote. We are seeing an inflow of people being laid off trying to sell their shares. These companies have built their headcounts up so much, so there are a lot of people highly motivated to get a sale done. In general, we are seeing 30 to 80% decline in price from a year ago. So think about that. You've got all these people who are holding on to what they believed was so valuable. Stock valuations came down considerably, and as a result, they're left selling at the time in which they did not hope. Uh, you know, during this period, you could look at some of these companies like ByteDance being one example. Of course, you've got SpaceX, Epic Games and some others. Now, these are private markets. Things work a little differently than what you see on the public. But in general, all I'm trying to say is that during these periods of time, this is when people need them the most. It's not when you, you don't sell when you're up considerably. Most people, they don't get that chance. They have to sell at the worst possible time. So that's why we must be prepared. If we're diversified, we're going to be able to take from here, take from there at the right moment. That's the key. Let me look into this further. As roads split into 2022 stocks, one trade made all the difference. And I'm going to show you that. Stick with me. Okay, look at this. We got to see who was swimming naked. All or nothing market forces stock pickers to focus on macro. The worst year for equity bulls since 2008 will also be remembered as the one wherein the predominant investor strategies veered from one another by the most in two decades. Divergent fortunes befell the most famous UX stock benchmark, S&P, 20% loss, 20% loss almost, more than twice that of the Dow Jones. Interesting, right? Well, they just show you here that comparison between value and growth and in this case there was a huge disparity ah all right so they show you a little bit more and i just wanted to cover one point and that is it says it's the first year in a while that doing required doing something other than just buying the dips and holding to make money you remember how many individuals would say just buy the dip just buy the dip in fact it's still happening today every single day it's out there but there's more to it look here I can show you when you look at value beating growth. Cheap looking stocks have had the best year versus faster growers since 2000. Isn't that interesting? When we were told, do not get into those old companies. They don't know what they're doing. Warren Buffett is washed out. Stop looking over there. What we need to do is invest in Zoom. We need to invest in Peloton. These are the future stocks. But doesn't seem to be the case. And then he gets into this point, which I wanted to uh, highlight really important. Okay. Doing well in 2022 came down to a single decision in terms of portfolio construction. Immunize yourself from interest rate sensitivity. That's what was really key. The companies, as I told you before, the companies that would be hit hardest in oftentimes are the growth stocks because they grow off of debt. That debt became more expensive suddenly they can't grow. And the two names they mentioned in here, PayPal and Meta. They switched it up for companies like Coca-Cola and Shell, and suddenly they performed better. Now, I'm giving you the real deal. I'm giving you what you need to know right now. I hope this is valid information. I hope this is useful information to you. If it is, hit that like button down below. Let me show you what's happening here. The IMF, the head of the IMF, says that there's going to be a tough year ahead. 2023 
is going to be tougher than the year we leave behind. Now, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Apparently, the IMF does. But what the reason why is essentially the three main economies, US, EU, and China, are all slowing down simultaneously. And that creates a dangerous situation because it's hard to grow out of that. We can look at individual uh, indexes. We can look at commodities. In this case, commodities tend to tell us a story that you can't necessarily find um, you know, by looking at, let's say, tech stocks or you know, one individual Amazon. Okay, you might be able to get some information. You, you pull that from what FedEx reports. Maybe you can pull that from you know, one major company here and there, maybe even in an index of sorts. But looking at the industrial metals, for instance, the demand is going to tell a story for the entire global economy. Copper is sliding where inflation could send prices next year. So this article gives you some insight into, as to what has happened over the last while. But what I do believe must be understood is that when we look at the prices, this is based on, like anything else, supply and demand. And if there is a recession, this is the big thing, if there's a recession and China suddenly isn't building as much and we no longer need as much copper, well then, we are going to, well, by the way, 65 million empty homes. So there's a lot of copper sitting there. Um, and also, you know, with electric vehicles, a lot of copper is used in electric vehicles, I believe three times more uh, than in a combustion vehicle. So there's demand there. If they're building more of these things, they need that, okay? And as a result, we're gonna see some changes, but it depends on the demand. And so we will see if a recession hits, copper, could uh, go down, okay? That's, that's something that you need to know and be aware of. Now, let me break this down for you real simple. Rising interest rates can negatively impact high-risk assets such as stocks and high-yield bonds because they can decrease the price of these assets. This is because when interest rates rise, newly issued bonds will have higher coupons, making older bonds with lower coupons less valuable. Investors may sell off their high-risk assets to buy the newer, higher-yielding bonds, causing the price of high-risk assets to drop. The higher the perceived risk in the asset, the faster investors will sell. This is why we saw crypto and growth stocks sell off first as interest rates began to rise. One historical example of this happening is in the stock market crash of 1987, also known as Black Monday. On October 19, 1987, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 22.6%, its largest one-day percentage decline of all time. Many factors contributed to the crash, including concerns about rising interest rates and an overvalued stock market. As interest rates rose, investors sold off their stocks and moved their money into safer investments such as bonds causing the stock market to plummet. Of course, there was much more to it than that, but the point here is that risk assets suddenly become no longer attractive. You know, attractive. This is what I wanted to get into next. Let's begin by looking at this Bloomberg article, The Great Liquidity Debate. Top Wall Street traders size up the 2022 fallout. Don't blame bad liquidity for every ill in a year of central banks bird market fireworks. Of course, if you look at the number one factor, it is liquidity, also known as how much money the Federal Reserve and other central banks pump into the system or pull back. This is it. I don't know why it's being so complicated for so many. When they do these things, they screw everything up. They pump too much money in. Of course, what do you think you're going to get? You're going to get a bubble. What happened in 2020? They created a absolutely gigantic super bubble, the everything bubble. I've done probably everything bubble or super bubble. and probably did a thousand videos, a hundred videos at least with that. Nobody wants to believe it until it's too late. There isn't anything systematically wrong with the markets, and I don't think that we have any existential threat. Things will get better when the macro backdrop gets better. Is that the way we should be addressing things, really? When we've created the everything bubble that we just say, look, things got to sort itself out and we're going to be A-OK. -okay. I don't think it necessarily works like that. This was um, it's an article out of Barron's, and... Well, I just wanted to point out this, this one point here because it's going to help you out. Look, finally, 
Bears on the economy point to the Fed's shrinkage in its balance sheet and the corresponding decline in the money supply. Portents of the past economic downturns, Evercore ISI points out, however, that those measures remain elevated after their huge related increases uh, from 2020. The M2 money stock is over $21 trillion versus $15 trillion before 2020. So obviously, there has been this huge bunch of liquidity entering the system. Now they're starting to pull back on that, but in comparison to you know the level, it there's still so much. Now, what I wanted to mention was that what I have seen and all my research indicates that it's not necessarily a matter of total dollar value in the system, total dollar liquidity. Rather, it's you know the actual percentage of how much is going in right now or how much is being taken away right now. And the more intense on either direction, the more intense the markets will rise or fall. That's what I have seen. Okay, I'm going to work that out and sort of bring that into an entire video in my full explanation of the method that I use. But just know that. Okay. Here we have it. Tesla stock had the worst year ever. That doesn't make it cheap. Even with a 65% drop, still valued more than big rivals combined. So we're seeing in the last few trading days of the year, it had done uh, a, you know, well, at least compared to the prior fall that it had. But this is one example of the stock market believing that there's a never-ending supply of people wanting to come in and buy it at a higher price. China stock investors eye better 2023 after $3.9 trillion route. So what was it? Well, this all began, in my opinion, a lot of it began with Alibaba and Jack Ma. And now, like I said in a previous video, I, my understanding is that he's in Japan painting, which tells you that something strange is up. But basically, they were going to expand they wanted to go into the financial services. Everything looked fine for a minute. And then China basically turned around and said, we're not going to allow this to happen. There was massive scrutiny. They shut the whole thing down. Then they started going off further. They hit Tencent. They hit all these other, uh, other a lot of them were tech companies, basically saying, we are going to provide additional scrutiny. You're not going to be able to open up in the other exchanges across the world, like the US. And so this is going to have an impact on your overall company valuation. So the stock, one thing after another, the whole markets were getting hit. In addition to that, you got lockdowns basically for three years. That was another thing. So the economy just hasn't had a chance. And there were so many fears, so many unknowns, and that creates a sell off. So money moved into other places. And certainly investors are thinking is now the time to get in because valuations uh, have been punished. So you want to buy, of course, when things are cheap, we'll see. And who does that? Well, not the retail traders. Generally, retail traders are always the last in, last out. And so we see this rookie traders are calling it quits and their families are thrilled. A lot of people this is just one example. They actually show you a few that got into something they didn't know enough about. And that's the point here is that we, if we don't have the education, we're going to lose. So we have to be smart. We have to be diligent if we want to be able to actually succeed and invest and put our money in places that make sense. Okay. You know, when I show you these articles here, I have a thousand, but we, we have to understand that for a lot of individuals today, their money is probably, I'm not giving financial advice, but their money is probably better off, like 99.9% .9 of people, just keeping it in an S&P 500 index fund. Why? Because they do not have the level of you know, time to spend, to know where to put their money and to change, change, change. This is the fact. This is the fact that people don't want to hear because they say, no, I can beat the market. I can do that. But it's really key to realize 2022 was an example. What was another example? 2018 was an example that these times come and companies get crushed and don't go back to where they were before. Amazon has lost all of that growth that so many of these investors, they bought up, let's say, uh, maybe seven shares. They purchased seven shares of Amazon and they went through and they thought this was going to be great. This is going to be fantastic. But instead, they got burned by it. 
and they didn't make dividends, a lot of these investors that are buying these stocks. They're simply hoping on that capital appreciation and maybe they got ruined as a result of this. And then I wanted to really finish off with this. This is just a typical article that I see all the time. Please don't get swindled. You gotta, you gotta stay for this. Look, Morningstar had some wise, supposedly wise words. And what they're trying to tell people is that they gotta get into these all these obscure markets. They gotta put their money into these things that most won't even understand. And so your best idea is to get into an actively managed bond fund that's going to be suitable because you're always going to be able to make some cash. But when you actually factor in what we can see for most of these investments, you don't make a lot of money. In fact, in some cases, you actually lose money. If you read um, Tony Robbins' book, Money, Master the Game, I believe it was, you know, he describes it very well in there. And that is, if you look at the actual fees, both public publicly shown as well as the hidden fees that are behind the scenes, uh, you know, you will lose over the period of, let's say, 30 years of investing, you are going to lose potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars because of fees. So we have to be a little bit smarter about this. We have to take advantage of this. And I'm going to break it down completely for you here on this channel. I will give you every detail you need to know. What do you got to do? Simply hit that subscribe button right now. Don't delay. Hit that subscribe button. And every single day, you're going to get a video that breaks it all down. So simple, so easy. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.